Earlier today, the president signed an executive order ordering reforms to the H-1B visa program that lets companies bring in foreign workers to fill jobs that allegedly Americans are not capable of doing. Billionaire Mark Cuban is a vocal supporter of H-1Bs. He says that importing foreign labor makes America stronger. We spoke with him about the president's order. Mark Cuban, thanks for joining us tonight. So the president's H-1B-oriented uh, executive order will slow down that, that visa process from abroad. You've said in past statements you think that's bad for America. How so? Right. Well, there's two parts to the H-1B story. First, there's the hoarding of visas, which I think is a problem. You get a lot of outsourcing companies that apply to the lottery in huge numbers, and they just win a lot of visas, and they use them for lower-paying jobs. That's wrong. Hopefully, this addresses it. On the flip side, there's, there's the other side of getting the most qualified applicant for a company. And going out there and searching the world for the best applicant, I think, is a good thing for American business. It allows us to compete globally in ways we may not have otherwise been able to. I mean, that's the talking point, and it, and it makes sense, I have to say, on its face. But mm -hmm. the reality, as you know, is that 80 percent of the foreigners admitted under H-1B make less than the median income in the field in which they work. In other words, they're being brought over not by, because of their skills, but because right. they save labor costs. That's, that's a subversion of the well, idea. But... Okay. Correct. But remember, I said there were two elements here. The jobs but that were, were companies are just hor but But it still makes a difference, right? The, the nuances, the details matter, Tucker. The, the companies that are hoarding visas, they're the ones that are causing the problem you're mentioning, where people are coming in and they're forcing down wages. That's bad. That's wrong. That's not at the core of the value of H-1B visas. So when you look at the actual numbers, you're exactly right, and hopefully this will address it. But when it comes to competing for the best talent around the world, I'm a big believer in American exceptionalism. I believe we can compete. And when someone from one of our universities, when a native-born American or an immigrant naturalized, however you want to define someone working here in yeah. the United States, when they can't get the job, we get smarter. We know, you know, if someone doesn't get a job from me, you know, I tell them, work harder, get smarter, you'll get it the next time around, you'll get the next job. I think that's good for everybody. Except in a lot of those cases, we don't get smarter, we get unemployed and go on disability. I mean, 44% they're about of recent go, college go graduates. Go on to disability? Yeah, I mean, people actually stay out of the labor force for huge long periods of time. They're not even counted in the official numbers. That's how long Tucker, they're out that's of labor so force. far out of left field, you know, to assign no, no, it's, a it's disability actually, issue. It's, look, 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 it, I, I'm talking I'm talking about SSI disability insurance, which is one of the ways that people make do when they don't have a full-time job, yeah, as you know, and it's, it's no, a huge no issue question, in but, this country. But to, yeah, of course. People going on disability when they shouldn't is an issue. That's an issue to be addressed. But don't attach it to the H-1B visa issue. But, but Again, I'm, not, I'm not attacking clear. anyone for being disabled. You're missing the point. What I'm, what I'm really saying is we have a huge unemployment problem in America, and that also extends to people who just graduated from college, over 40 percent of whom say they're underemployed. So we have a massive labor pool that's educated in our system, and yet they're being turned away in favor of people who are educated abroad. Yeah, that but does you not know help what? America yeah. in any way. Well, again, part of what's going to change is the visa hoarding. I can't emphasize that enough. That is where Americans get undercut in the pricing for jobs. Problem, we agree there. But where, where there is better talent external that, and that's global, we have to go get them. Otherwise, those people are going to go to other companies around the world. They're going to come in and compete with our companies. And not only will the job be lost that was given to the right. better talent, but the companies that needed them, all those other people that work for those companies may lose their jobs as well. Yeah, so I mean, from the bigger picture, and right. look, Tucker, either you believe in capitalism, either you believe in the market economies, or you don't. There's no in-between. And part of that market <laughs> there actually economy, is part, in -between. part of capitalism uh -huh. is how people how people compete for jobs, right? I love that. When did the left become addicted to market fundamentalism? Oh, no, 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 no. There are no, many no. in betweens. Of course, there I'm are. not the left. Would Tucker. you? Well, well, hold Tucker, on. I'm you, not the left. Would by you a long apply? Shot. Would you apply market forces to your marriage, to your family? I mean, there are limits to <laughs> how far. No, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Capitalism is not a religion. It's an effective way of generating wealth. But to the extent it hurts Americans, shouldn't we respond? I mean, we don't do something just you know, because it's, like, big, big consistent question. with capital. I don't know. You're the one who said, well, that's, are you against capitalism? I like capitalism. But when it hurts Americans, I'm willing to make adjustments. Wouldn't you be? 
Well, isn't that the nature of capitalism? Isn't that the nature of a market economy? That in the short term, there is dislocation, there is disruption, but hopefully, because of American exceptionalism, because we are who we are, that we believe in entrepreneurship, we believe in the American dream, that entrepreneurs can go out and use that, use their knowledge to create new companies. So yeah, right. I hate the displacement that occurs when there's change, but, it, but the reality is, in a capitalist, market-driven system, with adjustments and with, you know, yeah, there's, there's things where we give some on the, a true market system, and that's a good thing. I'm not for, you know, laissez-faire libertarianism. But in this particular case, if American companies can't go out and hire the best talent, then those American companies are still going to have to compete with those smarter people right. no, I get in the it. global economy, no I, I, matter what. I get what. it, and I think that's, that's a fair point. But will you also concede there's something kind of repulsive about watching billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg or the guys at Microsoft invoke the Statue of Liberty and civil rights in an effort to get cheaper labor from India. They basically say this is a nation. No, it's like, no, you're, you're you know big what? employers and you want to hire people cheaply. So yeah. stop lecturing me about Rosa Parks, right? <laughs> you know, first of all, I don't go out. I have never used an H-1B visa to go and bring somebody in in any one of my 150 plus companies. So I just want to get that on the table. Right. As far as Microsoft and Facebook and some others, I don't think they're using outsourced um, labor which again is what is driving down the pricing is what's causing jobs and where you're seeing the examples of people having to re, um, train their replacements. I think for the most part they pay premiums in the studies I've seen Facebook and Google in particular when they hire they pay a premium they're, they're not coming in to cut down the price of labor. Do you think it would be fair for the US government to require employers when they bring over people on an H-1B visa to pay them market price and to not undercut American labor when they bring those people in? On the surface, that makes perfect sense. I, you know, I think that's happening. But again, Tucker, I can't repeat it enough. If you get rid of the visa hoarding, the problem that you have, and I agree with you here, we're on the same page here. If you get rid of visa hoarding, that problem disappears. If you, if you change the lottery so that it's based on the job, it's based on a meritocracy, that problem disappears. So I really agree that there's, there's a necessity for changes in H-1B. But the, you know, getting rid of the hoarding will solve that problem. So why has nobody done this? I mean, I, I don't want to get too political with you. I know you're not a political guy, but gee whiz, we just had eight years of the Messiah who cared about ordinary Americans. This is a problem. You're conceding it's a problem. Why didn't the last administration right. address this? Maybe because they were in bed with the tech community. Well, maybe, you know, but yeah. at the same time, you, you have to prioritize. And, you know, it, it's... I, I don't have an answer for you. Look, I'm not a liberal. I'm not a conservative. I think right. for myself, I'm an independent. You can, you, there's always a way to find answers to specific problems. And, you know, government doesn't always deliver those. And so, you know, I'm not going to speak to why it didn't get solved before. Fair point. Mark Cuban, thanks a lot for joining us on that. I appreciate it. Always fun, Tucker. Thank